Hello, today's Bible study comes from the Pathway book, The Bible Studies for Adults. It is coming out of Lesson 3 for March 15, 2020. The title is called Getting What They Deserve. The devotional reading is Psalm 130. The background scripture is Habakkuk, Habakkuk 2. Uh, printed passage is Habakkuk chapter 2, uh, verses 6 through 14, and reads as follows. Will not all of them taunt him with ridicule and scorn, saying, Woe to him who piles up stolen goods and makes himself wealthy by extortion. How long must this go on? Will not your creditors suddenly arise? Will they not wake up and make you tremble? Then you will become their prey, because you have plundered many nations. The peoples who are left will plunder you, for you have shed human blood. You have destroyed lands and cities and everyone in them. Woe to him who builds his house by unjust gain, setting his nest on high to escape the clutches of ruin. You have plotted the ruin of many people, shaming your own house and forfeiting your life. The stones of the wall will cry out and the beams of the woodwork will echo it. Woe to him who builds a city with bloodshed and establishes a town by injustice. Has not the Lord Almighty determined that the people's labor is only fuel for the fire? that the nations exhaust themselves for nothing, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Amen. Amen. Let's get into this because this is tough. Um, in verse five, in verse 6 it says, Will not all of them taunt him with ridicule and scorn, saying, Woe to him who piles up stolen goods and makes himself wealthy by extortion. How long must this go on? Habakkuk was addressing all the people that had fallen at the evil Babylonians' hands. And why would the why would this verse in part is part of a song, I'm sorry, that was being stated in the song starts with this woe. And if you remember when Jesus was using the woes, <laughs> they were bad. And this starts off with a, a woe and continues through the other woes because there are some more woes in this passage, this song. It speaks to how long must we suffer under the Babylonians. All of the nations who have been captured and their people killed by these ruthless Babylonians have taken up a parable against them. They know that God will bring condemnation upon these evil people. They just do not know when. They don't know when. And they have taken countries and people that do not belong to them. They are really asking God, how long will we wait? Will you will we wait for you to punish these evil men? Overlooking our own evil. When it speaks to the thick clay that comes under, and you need to see that in the King James Version, it is speaking to the things that are from the earth. You know, these things that we claim to be so much. The things that we call wealth, from gold to diamonds to money, they will all pass away. They will not make it to glory. Habakkuk, Habakkuk starts the song with this woe, and it continues to the end of chapter 2. Each woe has its own subject, and this one is how long must they be oppressed? Hmm. It speaks to the convertness of man, and don't forget, and I meant to say the covetousness of man, and don't forget that this was a time when Habakkuk was asking, why would a people more sinful than Judah be used to bring judgment against them? Sin is sin. They did not feel like they deserved this treatment because they were not as bad as, <laughs> as their oppressors. And how is that right? Sin is sin. We're going to get to that. Verse 7 says, Will not your creditors suddenly arise? Will they not wake up and make you tremble? Then you will become their prey. Now in this verse 7, which is still part of the song, things change. It tells you that the nations that they have gone through, the, the survivors that they have stolen, extorted from, Everything 
everything that they took from them will get you. They will get them and take some of the stolen property back. Uh oh. In short, the nations that were not totally destroyed, they go attack Babylon and steal back their goods and probably others. Verse 8 says, Because you have plundered many nations, the peoples who are left will plunder you. Uh oh. For you have shed human blood. You have destroyed lands and cities and everyone in them. These are the remnant people that were left, and Babylon is still going to be punished for its actions. The groups of people left behind in each nation are the ones that will come after them. And if you read verse 17, it states these things. Uh, Habakkuk 2 and 17 says, For the violence of Lebanon shall cover thee, and the spoil of beasts which made them afraid because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land of the city, and of all that dwell therein. God will bring judgment on Babylon by the Medes and the Persians. The cruelty and the bloodshed the Babylonians had brought on others would bring the very same type of treatment upon them. You worried about God punishing the ones that's been bad to you. Okay, because they sin him, but you were sinning. Let God handle those sins and that punishment. That's not yours. You weren't handling yours because you were sinning. So they had gone much further than God intended for them to. When they attacked Judah and Jerusalem, God's judgment of the Chaldeans would be severe for this reason. Babylon had been going around doing what they wanted to do and then more. And the Lord was going to punish them. As you can see with the first woe, even as our book states, this still will happen when God is ready. And that is the problem that Habakkuk is having because he is ready for it to be over, just as the people are ready for it to be over. You have people that are sinning more than others and you are going to have them punish us. That's a question. That's a problem to him. He's saying, come on, man. We, we ain't doing sins that bad. We ain't doing the things they're doing. But first and foremost, sin is sin. If you look at Romans 3 and 23, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us sin is sin. Then go to Psalm 130 and 3, and this is the psalm that's associated with the reading. It says, If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? That answer would be none of us. None of us. Christ Jesus was the only perfect one. None of us could stand. So, Lord... I can't stand because I sin, and they can't stand because they sin. So I guess we just sin because neither one of us can stand. Well, that's what you're finding out right now. So know that none of us have gone without fault, and we can't ask the Lord to punish someone else for their sin when we have our own. Punishment and forgiveness would be when the Lord said so. Thy will be done, not my will. It's either Yahweh or your way. And since you ain't created nothing, it's going to be Yahweh. I don't want you to think that the Lord wasn't coming back for Babylon either. In their sense, because he was. But it just wasn't when Habakkuk wanted it to be. Babylon will get theirs. And the book uses two verses that I like to state this. Proverbs 22 and 8 says, Whoever sows injustice reaps calamity and the rod they wield in fury will be broken in short you may think that you are getting over babylon with your injustice and just as judah was being punished for the injustices you have that fate coming and you will be broken see you are running around doing more than you need to do and spreading injustice everywhere but you were not supposed to be doing that in the first place. You cannot keep doing injustice and think that the Lord is not coming. Galatians 6 and, 6 and 7 says, 
Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. So if you sow injustice, you will reap it. If you mistreat God's people, the Lord will take care of that because vengeance doesn't belong to us. But that wait time for it to happen is hard for us because we want it now. And sometimes we need that wait to get what we deserve. And sometimes it is a chastising and punishment. Sometimes it's a corrective action by the Lord. Sometimes you might not want to get it at all because it'll be that severe. But if you look at Proverbs 3 and 12, it does tell you, For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as the father the son in whom he delighteth. We should thank God for whatever he lets us through, go through, because we deserve so much more. And he is that merciful. So Habakkuk and the people had to go through this time. You had to go through it. You were sinning. You can't tell the Lord how to punish you, how to correct you. Who are you? Yeah, I'm sick of it. We all sick of suffering. We all sick of misery. But you know what? We usually put ourselves in it in the first place. When we are disobedient, when we don't do as the Lord tells us. And this decision is God's decision on when it will happen. Where and how they will be dealt with, that's God's decision. So in verse 9 it says, Woe to him who builds his house by unjust gain, setting his nest on high to escape the clutches of ruin. This was a covetous nation. Mm. And that, it was so evil that they were even harmful to themselves. They even were bad to themselves. The Babylonians had an evil pride about them, and they were stealing and building themselves up by doing this. And the covetousness and pride motivated them to be even more evil. The Lord tells us about coveting, but the great part is, what does he tell us about pride? Because they had pride in what they were doing. And Proverbs 16 and 18, you know it says, Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. That was them. That had pride and things, they had pride in things that they were doing made them exalt themselves. For what? Like they had done something good? In this entire process, they were truly sinning against each other, and this was going to bite them. It's going to get them. God is going to humble the proud, covetedness, and arrogant Babylonians and please know that he will do it to us. Isaiah 13 and 11 says, And I will punish the world for the Eve for their evil and the wicked for the iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. You have plotted the ruin of many peoples, in verse 10, shaming your own house and forfeiting your life. He said, You have tried to destroy many people. And even sinned against yourself in doing so. They wrong their neighbors and do much greater wrong to their own souls. Proverbs 8 and 36 says, But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. In verse 11 it says, The stones of the wall will cry out, and the beams of the woodwork will echo it. The things that you have used to build yourself up will cry out, even the stones of your palace that were seized in your violent takeovers, they will cry out injustice. If you look at Luke 19 and 40, it says, I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. You can't hide it because the gains from all of this will even cry out the sins that you have done. So no matter what you think the gain is, it's done in sin. It's going to cry out. Verse 12. Woe to him who builds a city with bloodshed and establishes a town by injustice. The Lord was not only displeased with the greedy, he also pronounced a woe against the violence. Babylon built their cities on the bloodshed of other nations and increased their sizes 
of the city, so they killed even more. And they established these by doing injustice. But remember that part of God's throne is justice. And justice can't give a country, injustice can't give a country stability. Injustice cannot give a country stability, but justice can. If you look at Proverbs 29 and 4, it says, By justice a king gives a country stability. But those who are greedy for bribes tear it down. Mm. Our God is a God of justice, and things can't and won't stay unjust. They won't. Isaiah 30 and 18 says, Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he will rise up to show you, us, compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. Go through it and wait for him. But it will be in God's time. You may suffer. You may think it's too long. But wait. It'll be in his time. But you will get what you deserve. Verse 13, has not the Lord Almighty determined that the people's labor is only fuel for the fire, that the nations exhaust themselves for nothing? God is in charge of Babylon's destruction, and God will not let sin stand. The Chaldeans slash Babylonians didn't know our God, but Jehovah, who has at his command all the hosts of heaven and earth, is the righteous author of Babylon's destruction. Shall not God have his turn when cruel people, cruel men have triumphed for so long? He's coming back. Though he seemed now to be still, we waiting on him. He's coming back, but he will handle this. Jeremiah 51, 8 and 9 says, Babylon will suddenly fall and be broken well over her. And it says it with an exclamation point. Get balm for her pain. Perhaps she can be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she cannot be healed. Let us leave her and each go to our own land, for her judgment reaches to the skies. Uh-oh. It rises as high as the heavens. And verse 14 says, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The violent man thinks that his might makes him right all the time. So he feels free to abuse others for his gain. As a correction and a rebuke, the Lord reminded the violent man of his ultimate triumph. The Jews are going to be restored. And the temple is going to be built. And God's glory in saving his people is going to happen. And the punishing of their foe is going to happen. And it shall be manifested throughout this world. Of which the Babylonians formed a huge part. A type of the ultimate full manifestation of the glory of God and his final salvation of Israel and his church. And their destruction of all their foes. He's coming back. He will handle your problems. He will handle your situations. But wait on them. Because... If you're doing wrong, you still don't get what you deserve. And just like they were doing wrong, they're going to get what they deserve. But don't look at them and see that plank, that sawdust in their eyes, rather, and you still got that plank in yours. Amen.